figure out how to change the colors. Yeah. You know, anytime I try to like import those colors, it completely breaks. Try double clicking right on that little thumbnail. And then just target your file. So you'd have to you'd have to export out the individual monkey into an SVG. So you'd select the entire monkey and then just right click and then export it out as an SVG. Which file? The Photoshop or the Adobe? That one right there. How's it going? Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> it won't. It won't break. It don't. It, no, they'll they'll be there. They'll show, but you can't edit them. Yeah, just confirm it. Yeah. Well, play it. That's just the first stage, right? You gotta have your timeline open because that's just the first uh, stage of the. Yeah. So that remember I said at the beginning, when I was, I, was, I mentioned this. You won't be able to edit certain things, text being one of them, because you don't have the font. But you can still make changes to color. You just have to figure it out. So what the, yeah, so there's two things. One, the monkey is a smart object. And it's a link uh, to the original XVG. So you've got the AI file. So you can go in and change the monkey colors and then save out each individual monkey as, a, as an SVG. And then that will allow you to relink it back in. So what you do is you just double click on your thumbnail in Photoshop of the smart object and it's gonna go, hey, where's this file? You wanna relink it? And you say, yeah. You point to your new SVG with the color change, boom, it gets swapped out. Now text, you can't do anything with the text because it didn't give you the, um, the fonts. So you're gonna have to figure out how to change color. You want to leave the fonts as is. You want to leave the styling just the same way that the styling is currently. So how would you change color? Do you remember when we did the, um, the graphic user interface with that volume dial last term? We were working with layer, layer styles. And so a layer style will allow you to change color and do different things. Then we got layer styles. So layer style, you can attach a layer style to any layer uh, in Photoshop, any visual layer in Photoshop. And it allows you to put a stroke on, uh, a color overlay, gradient, inner shadow, uh, drop shadow, all of that, textures, remember? So it's in layer, top menu, or you double click on any layer to the right of any layer uh, away from the name and your layer styles will pop open. Some of the layers, some layers already have layer styles attached to them. So you may just need to go in and change the color. So what you don't want to do with that, it doesn't work. When you do what? Like save, save as an SVG and stuff. Yeah, did you relink it? Sometimes it, it, it doesn't give me the option. Well, I think what you've done now is you've linked to the document rather than the SVG. Um, so what you could do is just select the object in Illustrator, copy it, and paste it in the Photoshop. It'll paste in as, uh, as its own layer. So you just copy, paste, and drag it in. Look at this one. Yeah. Well, don't change the font. Well, because I want to see if you can work with the, the content that you're given. That's the whole challenge. Of course, if you change the font, then you can do anything with it that you want. But I don't want you to, I want you to work with the pre-existing font to see if you can change it. That's perfect. What you've done is absolutely perfect. Yep. And does it play? Does it sequence through? <laughs> it doesn't. I can tell that. The only one frame is there you go. But at least he's there, so it's easy to change your panel. So what you do is you go to the frame that you change. Go to the layers that you made changes to. So if you could change it, you change, yeah. So right click on that, copy layer styles, 
and then just go to each individual. Uh, and paste it yeah, in. and just paste it in. Yeah. yeah, just do it once. And if you don't do it all, that's fine. Just get a, even if you just get a couple frames changed, it just goes to show that you know how to change the two frames. That's the main thing. Just make some sort of change. And then that leads us to where we're going to work with the uh, animated part I'm of sorry it. I ask so many questions. I'm just very confused. No, you got it. That's what you're supposed to do. Then it's like on every frame. So, so yeah, so you've got to go to each one of those frames. And if you delete something off of that, or turn something off, it's gone off that frame in that animation. So go and find that guy, turn him off as a layer, and then he won't be there. Yeah, I just changed the color, so do I have to delete the this separately or other? Nope, that's fine. If you've got it in Photoshop, that's all you need. Okay. I'm going to link it in the back. You only have to link it back if I were to edit it. It will open. It will tell me that links are broken, but it will still show me your work. It's only if I go to edit it that things will break. But I'm not editing, I just want to see that it's, and it doesn't matter anyway, because you're not going to be submitting this, you're going to be submitting the actual animation. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. Yeah, as long as there's a change. It looks like you change the background, you change the text mm -hmm. color. I have no, but this, this is what I'm trying to paste it in. And when it paste it, it gives me like gravity. So what you would normally do when there's a break is just yeah, double click on the link and relink it. If that's not working, then just grab the, um, you can just grab, like go to the Illustrator file, just select the character and copy it and paste it into Photoshop and it'll paste it as a new layer. And then you can just place it in uniquely. You know, if I turn it off, it turns everything off. No, turn it back on. That's what you need right there. And then you would click on the second frame over there. And then you would put in the next character, get rid of that one or turn that one off, bring in the next one, turn that one off as well. And then bring in the next one, the next state, yeah, uh, of your blue one. And then, yeah, you just have to go into Oh, okay. So it's just frame by frame animation. I see, thank you. Like I said, you can just get a couple, couple frames, two, three frames. You don't have to do it all. Just enough that it is an actual animation, and then we're going to go to the next step.
All right, does everybody have at least two frames changed? I'll take that as a yes. Okay, so let's finish off our animation. So we could create a video of this, not a problem. But this is a very basic animation. It's just a sequence of um, seven unique frames. And, um, or I guess eight unique frames, sorry. Uh, and it's illustrated. So there's, there's no need to make it uh, a movie. There's not enough uh, images, there's not enough frames to sort of create fluid motion, motion out of this. So um, you might as well make it as small a file as possible. So the video file is gonna be fairly large. So what we'll do is we'll make an animated GIF out of it, which is what an animated GIF is. It's well suited to this. Animated GIFs handle flat content very, very well. So there's flat values, the flat value, flat value. This does have some texture, but it's probably made up of two or three different values. So there you go, flat value. So there's just a lot of flat color, and that's what when an animated GIF works very, very well for producing that. So, we could go and, go and go file, save a copy, which would give us the option at that point to save out um, the formats that we want. So we could save out a GIF. And because it has multiple frames, it will save it out as an animated GIF. An animated GIF is the same as a GIF. The only difference is that the animated GIF is just made up of a sequence of images but it's all the same file type, so it really doesn't matter. Um, now, there is WebP down there. Just be mindful of this right now. Photoshop doesn't allow for WebP animations out of Photoshop. You need to buy, or not buy, you need to get, it's free actually, it's on GitHub, but you need to get the free um, uh, plugin. It's a converter that will convert the whatever you have as a timeline animation in Photoshop, it will convert to a WebP animation. Currently, right now, it only you can only export out a static WebP image. Okay, so WebP is not really going to work for us right now. Hopefully, next version of Photoshop, which should be coming out sometime this summer, I would think, so by the, at least by the beginning of next September, I'm hoping. Uh, and I'm assuming and hoping that WebP will be more heavily integrated into the workflow of Photoshop. But let's make it a GIF, and, or rather, let's just, we could make it a GIF and say, or save to that, okay? But let's just bypass that for one second, because that doesn't give us a lot of control over what we can do with it, just saves it, okay? I guess we have these options here, which are pretty good, but let's just cancel that for right now. And we're gonna go back to what we looked at last term when we were looking at optimizing images for the web. Let's go back to file, let's go to export, and let's go to this legacy save for web. Let's hope they never deprecate this because I think it's a good little tool. Open it up. Just click on two up, the tab on the top left hand corner, click on two up so it shows the original image at 1.89 megabytes, and this one over on the right hand side. So what do we wanna make it? We can make it any one of these, um, but we can get into getting into GIFs, right? So we can get uh, choose any one of these GIF options and go through it at that point and say, well, what do we want to do with it, right? So we know that we probably ideally want to go with colors, 256 sample of colors. We remember that GIFs create a color table. A color table is derived by samples, color samples, taken from the original image. So the algorithm runs through, the GIF algorithm runs through, analyzes this image, and samples the most, most used values, most used colors, I should say, um, in there, and then creates a color table out of that. So red is clearly the red of the hair, right? And all these colors are existing here somewhere. Okay, so that's a lot of color. It reproduces this, it looks identical, it looks really good. But you might say, well, maybe I can limit some of the color value by uh, reducing it by half. So go to 128 and look at your images and compare them and go, does it look pretty good? Now, if you see a little bit of pixelation or rather a little bit of uh, noise in there, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's why I built in noise as part of my background and that's why I'm using a very rough texture here because we can put in a little bit of noise, we can get a little bit of artifacting, and it's not necessarily gonna compromise the look of our image, 
because it already has that look. So when you deal with texture, when you deal with noise in, as a pattern in your design work, when you know you're gonna output it as a GIF or something like that, this is well suited to that because it, it's gonna take a while for that to really get uh, crummy looking in terms of quality. So let's go to colors, let's drop down by half to 128. And just compare it, right? Let's zoom in. So find a spot, maybe the text is good because it's got a hard edge to it. And you just do a comparative between the two. And you just go with what you think is gonna work best and try to get that file size down as small as possible. And then the other thing you can look at is transparency, whether or not you need the transparency channel in there. Um, and, and that sort of thing, okay? So what transparency is gonna allow you to do in this case, even though there's no actual transparency as part of it, the GIF is sitting against a white mat. You can see that over here. And so it's actually putting in an alpha channel as part of the GIF. That's what that transparency is for. And what it's doing is it's allowing all of those dots that look like white to simply be transparent and they're showing through the mat that's sitting in behind it. Okay, so I could change this map to a different color and influence how that's gonna look. Now I don't wanna do that because I would have done that in Photoshop. I want it to look just like this. Um, and there you go, you can sort of adjust the sizes. Now because it is an animated GIF, you can go down to the bottom here and you can sort of sequence through it frame by frame or you can click on the play icon, play it through, make sure everything's playing as it's supposed to and the timing is right. Once you're happy with all of this, the file size now is 623 kilobytes, which is just a little bit more than half a megabyte uh, compared to the original size. And it's, uh, you know, it's a fairly large file in terms of physical size. It's 600 pixels wide by 1,100 pixels high. So it's not a small image and it's pretty small in terms of file size. Anyway, once we're done that, let's go save. Save, give it a name, call it what you will. Save. Now to test it, what I would do is I'd go to your folder and just do a right click and open it in a browser because that's ultimately where we're going to be looking at this file. We're going to be looking at it in a browser. So we want to test it in a browser. So I'm just going to open up Google Chrome and there we go. And that's how it looks. Okay. Now I not, my animations aren't great because I don't have this background on. It doesn't look like it looks like I'm missing it on one of the frames. So I've got to go back that up, but that's kind of the idea. In the inbox, I'm missing that text too. Um, hey, I'm not getting 1% for this. It's not perfect, I can live with it. Um, but that's what's happened there. I just need to go in and, and, and turn those uh, turn those two features, one feature off, one feature on, the text feature on, on that particular frame, and then we've got ourselves to the animation. But that's, that's the idea. And that, as you can see, that's taking up a lot of room and it's not that big of a file. You can only imagine if it's physically smaller uh, on your screen, which it likely would be, because that's huge, it's gonna be all that much smaller. So half the size, 300 kilobytes, um, you know, down to, to, to 150, 180 for one third of the size, and that's a decent size for an animation, okay? Okay, so for WebP, we could now take something like this. There are third party uh, converter, so you could take your animation and then plug it into a uh, third-party converter and convert it to a WebP if you wanted to, and you would drop the size of this animation that much smaller if you want to do that. Okay, like I say, if you want to actually use Photoshop and generate animated uh, WebP files, you'll need that plugin um, to do that currently because Photoshop doesn't allow for it at the moment, but. Hopefully they'll build it into their next version of the software that's coming out. Okay, that is it. So hopefully somewhere on your site, if not several places on your website, you'll get some motion, some movement going, make it a bit more kinetic. It is a product after all, there's not a lot to it. So you wanna get some nice images in there, not a lot of nice 3D work and get some animation, okay? Lots of different ways to get things moving that don't rely on code, if you're not particularly strong with code, you lean towards these things to offset that, uh, that deficit, if it is a deficit at all. 
or you do both, right? You do both. All right, that is it. We will see all of you hopefully next week during our Zoom session. Yes? How do you submit it? Oh, well, do the animated gift, so just do what we just did and submit the gift. Oh, give me a break. There's a Dropbox there. There is. You're wrong. There it is. Sorry about that. Yeah, it, I must have locked it down when I locked all the, the, the homework for. So it's saying soccer must be animation gift, uh, anime gift rather. One percent. I'll leave it open for a little bit. So, the, remember we did the window, so we did that in class, and then the button right next to it, there's a little button that needs to slide with it. Are your bottles supposed to be the y'all for the sort of cures in? Okay, very cool. I like that. Yeah, that's nice. Those are, those are perfect. That's all you need. That's all you need. Oh, those look really good. Just gonna render a couple of those out. You can put you no, you can even do is you can put that in your style guide. So at the end of the style guide, um, before the very last page, you can put a couple still images of it. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's there. Wow. It's <laughs> good. Oh, just a question though. What what was the TVA again? That's this. I just so when we started the course, there were five. There was five percent not accounted for. Um, I've got to I, I got to go and hide the TV. I thought I did already, but I you did. I, did I, I? I saw it before when you right. Showed, and I was so like, the TBA the was just five percent that I was going to allot to different things. So one of which was the slider. Uh, one percent is this. Okay, cool. That's what it is. Yeah, you got a lot. Of, I got a lot of mileage out of that, didn't I? Yeah. Easy, easy stuff though. <laughs> you're in class. You're doing it anyway. You got marks for doing work in class. Just send it to me in an email. And like, I'll, I'll get it done as soon as I can. I, I uh, just in a, like a really, really bad spot right now because I don't, I don't. Quite grasp the FIP for most of, most of the classes, and I don't okay. really have any good projects on it yet. So I'm starting to panic because I am behind on three different projects. Well, I need to get the FIPs. Yeah, send me the send me the just do the. Uh, that's a nice color scheme. I like that. Send me the um, send me the the uh, cinema graph as soon as you get it. Just email it. It should be small enough uh, file size. Okay, but oh, I'm so sorry. It's fine. Oh.
what, what did you suggest I do about the FIPs? Because for Joe's class, I could swear he said that to make a desktop, like, only without prototyping it? So mm. I, I think you're supposed to do all three. That was... I don't know. You gotta, you gotta, I would confused. contact Joe about that because he's the one that stipulates that. I just need to see the design. Yeah, did you hear what the Joe say to prototype or? Like for, the, is it for the FAP? Yeah. Uh, I believe it's all three because you have to do responsive, hmm. you know? It's a responsive so layout, right? So he's got to show. Represent all of them. How it's going to look. Yeah. Yeah. It's hurt. So you will use your midterm one. Have you done the midterm? Yeah, yeah I, I did the midterm. So you will complete over that. So whatever you've done for midterm, you will just like add um, whatever your final will look like. You will um, do, by, do based on the wire, the 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 wireframe and everything. You will do based on the website for the final. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like just uh, complete over the midterm. Midterm was like a part of the IP as well. All right. Okay. Yeah, no, that's you get something you gotta do that, right? You roll the roll the dice on it. You mean roll the dice in week two? I'm joking. Um, I'm joking. So I got to help. Okay. Nice. okay, so I yeah, I tried to do it but like all of them overlay and I try to add it, but just do the same thing. So you just go to each individual one of these and just just turn them off. I did and it's like same thing happened. So I let you into like each of them. So like but are you so go to turn the turn it off, turn the eye off? Yeah. And then go out of it and back. And do this thing, yeah? Turn that one off. Because he just did now. So just so yeah. this is, uh, see there it goes. Yeah. Um, how do you export it? So it's, so it's all ready to go. You can literally just do and, and go save a copy and make it a GIF, and it will automatically make it an animated GIF because it recognizes that there's more frames. Save a copy. Yes, yeah, save a copy. Save as doesn't offer the same. Um, file types, it just offers Photoshop, Photoshop EPS, Photoshop Template, um, and Photoshop PDF. So you're gonna wanna make it, um, and then just make it, yeah, change format to uh, GIF. Yep, I'm just gonna GIF. Yeah, and then it will open up this, yep, say save, and then it will open up the second window. And you can you can leave it at 256. So that's probably what you want, but you could take it to 128 too. It doesn't matter. So now go to wherever that's saved, and then if you right click it or just drag it into a browser, it will play. So that tells you that it's an animated GIF. My final question. I have only one more. Do you know that GIF graphic you want us to make? Is that the same thing as the? infographic requirement for the FIP or is it could be anything it's it, it literally I just want to see something move um, on your on your website so it could be a video it can be a cinema graph like we do with the so record player or it can be a gif like gif we did this one huh so this, this and it's like we could use the gif graphic sure but it's got to be related to your FIP yeah, like an advertisement with the bottle on it? Yeah. Oh, okay, thank yeah. you. So this 